Hi. I'm Mary Hood. Today is November 29th. I haven't been here for a whole month. Tomorrow will be a whole month. I wasn't sure I was going to come back. But right now I'm back. I find myself back. It was a really full month. And if anybody remembers from my last session, I had gathered the last of my mint. And I had no words for November, so I couldn't go on. I did give one more handful of mint after that because I saw all that was left and I was, um, I, I, it was sad to see that there was so many leaves left. So I did gather one more handful and, and I gave it back and I gave it to him. but. God said it's the end of a season. You have to let the rest of it go. And trust that it's going to come back next year. So I did. And he gave me a couple of words in the next few days. He said, no nonsense. No nonsense, November. And then what happened was he proceeded to show me the ends of a couple of more seasons in my life that I let go too long. And he wanted me to end them. He said, it's time to end this season. And with a lot of hemming and hawing, going back and forth, I, I did. And then throughout the month, I kept picking it back up again. A little at a time, I kept picking it back up again mostly in my head. And then what happened yesterday, was I responded, I initiated something. Of that season, I initiated something because I thought it was important, I guess. And I didn't get a response back. And you know, I was okay with it. I was really okay. And this morning, I'm very grateful that I didn't get a response.
every Helen Keller needs an Ann Sullivan. I was reading about Helen Keller and Ann Sullivan, her teacher. She didn't pamper Helen Keller. If she did, Helen Keller probably would have been blind and deaf and mute her whole life. She wasn't cruel to Helen Keller. She was firm. She never abused her. She loved her. And I found out recently from a friend that Ann Sullivan had to go through a lot of hard times to get to the place where she could teach someone else. That's what a true friend does. That's what a true friend is. They'll tell you the truth and they will love you. They will love you. So anyway, I ended a few seasons in my life in November. I put a few things down. I, I also failed a lot. I want you to know that I also fell a lot. You know, it snowed the other day, and winter, I know by the calendar it's not here yet. It doesn't happen till December 21st, I guess. But winter's here. The ground is covered. I couldn't pick the mint if I wanted to. The season's over. I didn't rake the leaves this year. I chose not to. I let them fall and stay where they fell. They'll fertilize the ground and I guess maybe in the spring They'll be there. Maybe the wind will blow them away. I don't know. But it's the end of the season now. And I thought it was the end of these videos. But you know what else happened? Somebody asked me to do another one. One person asked me to do another one. This person listened to all 17 of them and this person asked me to do another one. And I said, I, 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 I don't know if I'm coming back, I don't know. And then I thought about it and I thought, 
what did Jesus do for the one? He left the 99 for the one. He left the 99 for me, the one. So this is for the one. This is for the one. And then God gave me things every day. I got thoughts every day. I wandered into the Bible. I wandered away from Moses. I wandered into the lives of Abram and, Ab and uh, Jacob and Isaac and Naomi and Ruth. And I, and I wandered. And I learned a lot. Oh, I learned a lot. It was rich. I wandered into the life of Paul. It was rich. And then I said, God, what am I going to do with all of this? And, and he said, well, you're not going to tell it all. And I said, what do you, what do you, what do, you do with a secret? What do you do with a secret? And I thought of Moses. This is where God said, well, well, what did Moses do? How did Moses get through? How do you think Moses got through? And I thought about the length of time he must have spent on the mountain. You know, I don't know how long he was on there the first time. I don't know. I couldn't find it. But I know it said the second time he went up. And by the way, some people say he went up seven times. I don't know. I don't know how many times he went up. But anyway, the two basic times that he went up. The second time he was up there for 40 days. And that's when he came down and they had built the golden calf. What do you think happened in 40 days on the mountain? Do you think... It took 40 days for him to, for God to, you know, to carve that stone into the Ten Commandments. It was only Ten Commandments. You think it took 40 days? I think God had conversations with Moses during those 40 days. And I believe the reason he could obey God For 40 years, not without failing, not without weakness. I think the main thing that got him through was remembering what God said to him when he was on the mountain. The secrets. The intimacy of being alone with God. The relationship that was formed and forged between him and God. God had a call on his life. He had to give him the motivation to carry that out because Moses wasn't a perfect human being. I have to remember the last thing that God said to me. And it might be a secret between me and him. That I can't tell anybody. So 
So I have to be very careful what to say and when to say it and who to say it to and, and what kind of a handful I can give. And this is the end of December, uh, November, the end of November. He's already given me something for December. It's not to say to you, it's to, it's for something else. But it's already making me so look forward to the next season, the season that's now beginning. Because the last season is over. We're always in a season. And there's always a good reason for the season. So I don't know when I'll be back. Maybe tomorrow, maybe next week. I don't know. And you know, I, I when I was thinking about where to put all my stuff, I said, well, God, I have a blog and I have, and I write on Medium, the website Medium. And I write in my journal, and I write poetry, and I write stories, and I write scripture. And now I'm doing a video. It, it, I'm scattered. And then he did take me to Ecclesiastes 11. where it says, cast your bread upon the waters. And in many days, it will return. I don't know if that's the exact end of the quote, but cast your bread upon the waters. And he kept bringing me back to that over and over again, cast your bread upon the waters. In many days, he didn't say in a year, he didn't say in a week, he didn't say in a month, he'd, he just said in many days, it could have been, it might be 30 years from now and I might be dead and gone, who knows? I'm just doing the next thing God tells me to do. Wherever and however and to whoever he tells me to give it, I'm giving a handful. A handful of hope. Have a great day. This is Mary Hood. Bye-bye for now.